Hello everyone, my name is Danny Stone and welcome to another Imperial Rome video. With the 2.0 Marius update due to release in less than a week, which promises a massive overhaul to the game and having poured close to 2,000 hours into the title, I thought the time was right to go through what I consider to be the 5 hardest achievements in Imperial Rome and give a game that I thoroughly enjoy some much needed coverage. For this list, I shall be using achievements that I consider very hard to get due to the geographical locations of the countries that you are required to play, and all the conditions needed to complete the said achievement. I'll only be using the achievements that predate the 2.0 update, and I will not include the recent list of achievements added, as they are not doable at the time of the making of this video. So in no particular order, here are my 5 hardest achievements to get in Imperial Rome. First up on the list is the Tyrian Purple achievement. A particularly tricky achievement that requires the player to form the ancient trading nation of Phoenicia, own at least 500 ships, and produce a surplus of at least 5 dies in Tyrus. To form Phoenicia, you have to start with one of the three Phoenician nations of the game, the city-states of either Sidon or Byblos, or the slightly bigger regional power of Arados, all located on the coast of the Phoenician Sea. The difficulty of this achievement is not about having the 500 ships or the surplus of dies, but it all lies in the three nations starting location and the land required to create this ancient formable. Each of these three minor nations are at the start of the game tributaries to the vastly more powerful Antigonid Kingdom. If that did not complicate things enough and you do manage to break away, the land required to create the ancient nation of Phoenicia is held by your former overlord who is armed with a 5 year cast of spell eye against you as soon as you cancel your tribute and of course a permanent claim will soon follow. If you somehow manage to form Phoenicia and deal with the Antigonids, then you have the Kingdom of Egypt to the south and the Seleucid Empire to the east on your doorstep to contend with, all waiting for the opportune moment to strike down your newly formed nation. This achievement run will no doubt test your patience and sense of timing, but if you succeed you will be rewarded with a unique formable as well as a deep sense of satisfaction knowing that you are part of a select few that can boast this achievement. Next up on the list we have the Heraclea Persica achievement. For this achievement, starting as Heraclea Pontica, you must form Persia whilst your ruler belonged to the Achaemenid dynasty, the same dynasty as the great Persian ruler Cyrus the Great. Easy right? Well, not so much. The difficulty of the achievement lies in the starting location and the religious and cultural shift required to form the ancient empire of Persia as Heraclea Pontica. First of all, the starting location is notoriously perilous. With your back to the Black Sea, you have the aggressive and hostile Antigonid Kingdom bordering you to the south. To the east, Paphlagonia is larger than you and depending on the RNG factor could also be hostile. The trick here is to wait for the Antigonids to get caught up in the Diadochi Wars against Machanon, Egypt, the Seleucids, and if you are incredibly lucky, Thrace. This is when you strike, trying to quickly piece out for as much land as fast as you can. But if finding a way to expand without the Antigonids and other larger enemies trying to kill you wasn't hard enough, then the cultural and religious shift required for the achievement makes it so much harder. At the start of the game, Heraclea Pontica is of Greek culture and Hellenic religion. But to form Persia, your ruler needs to be of Persian culture and embrace the Zoroastrian religion. Luckily enough at the start, the game offers you a chance to embrace your Persian and Zoroastrian roots, allowing you the option to form Persia. Easy right? Well, no. If you remember, your realm and the surrounding area are, before you convert and assimilate, are Greek and Hellenic. This is going to make the achievement a lot harder because you'll have massive unrest and loyalty issues due to your provinces not being of the right culture and religion. If all of this was not bad enough, then you need huge swathes of land in order to form Persia and most of it is owned by the Seleucids, so long and arduous conquest awaits you. If you can succeed, you are rewarded with a cool formable and a new flag based around Cyrus the Great's standard, as well as an extra idea slot for forming the Persian Empire. Number 3 on the list is Red Naxalay or Alexander Backwards, where as a Hindu, Buddhist or Jain nation, which is not the Mauryas, you need to conquer Pataliputra, Babylon, Memphis and Athens. This is pretty much the no more worlds left to conquer achievement but the other way round. Now I have decided to include this achievement even though it can be achieved by starting as Moria and forming Balatavasha. Once formed the game no longer considers you as Moria but as Balatavasha and thus the achievement can be completed this way. However, I personally consider this to be a bug and believe that the achievement was not intended to be unlocked this way. If you want a real challenge, then try starting as one of the smaller southern Indian nations. 
Not only do you have to take out Moria, which is essentially the largest superpower at the start of the game, but you also have to push westwards towards Athens, Memphis and Babylon. This means going through the Seleucids, and if you actually survive that, the other successor states. But your main obstacle here is time. You only have 275 years to acquire the necessary land for the achievement, so speed is essential. The success of the run will depend on how fast you deal with the Morians. If you succeed, you will be part of the 0.2% of the insane but very skilled nutjobs that have managed to acquire this achievement. So saddle those elephants and good luck to Red and Axel A. Up next we have Pax Eterna, which is quite simply put, conquer the world. Yes, that means every single territory on the world map. <laughs> While this is not the most complicated in terms of objectives on paper, it is after all very simple. Conquer everything and everyone. I decided to include this on the list because it requires a lot of precise planning and knowledge of how to play the game. It is a true test of your prowess as a player and showcases that you are a master in all domains. Your main hurdle once again here is time and that is quite often with these achievements. You only have 275 years to conquer every territory in the game. This will require you to wage multiple wars on multiple fronts to maximise your conquest, know how to manage your unrest and of course your aggressive expansion. This will certainly put to the test your skills as an imperative player, and if you manage to succeed, you will be part of the select 0.3% of people to have done this and truly be master and commander of the ancient world. And finally, at number 5, the achievement only tried by the clinically insane and those who like to suffer immeasurable pain. We have the Spice Must Flow. This, in my humble opinion, is by far the most difficult achievement to get at the time of writing. In order to get this achievement that only 0.2% of players have managed to unlock, you must, as Mosselon, own every single spice producing territory in the world. You might be thinking that this doesn't sound too hard if the spices are grouped in one area of the world and that Mosselon is located in a reasonable starting area. If you thought that, then you are wrong on all accounts. Not only do you start as a one province miner on the Horn of Africa, with the capital located on the desert tile, which is literally one of the worst tiles to have, the spices required for the achievement happen to be spread out far and wide, going from the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula all the way to northern and southern India. To add more insult to injury, Mosulon starts as a republic, which means you also have to manage the Senate for all diplomatic actions, and this can slow you down considerably. To the north you have Egypt to contend with. To the west, you must go through Carthage in order to gain access to the spices in North Africa. And let's not forget the Seleucids and Moria to the east for their spice producing territories. If all of this wasn't hard enough, then you only have 275 years to do it. Your success depends on how quickly you deal with Egypt. The quicker you can take them out for the solid Kemetic based population, which will enable you to build a strong and economic manpower base, the faster you'll be able to do rapid conquest to the east and west for those juicy spice producing territories. I recommend spending the first few years relatively small, trying only to expand into the region of Punt in order to tech up as fast as possible. This way you can have 4 or 5 military tech levels ahead of Egypt for the extra morale boost and that will help you a lot on the battlefield. Once tech advantage is achieved, then take on Egypt once they are occupied in a war with a neighbour, which will hopefully be one of the Diadochi. You ideally need to conquer Alexandria and make it your capital by the year 550 AUC. Quite a decent amount of luck is needed to beat Egypt and only the most dedicated of players will be able to unlock this achievement, but if you manage to succeed, you will truly be the greatest of all time. Well, that's it from me for this top 5 video from Pearl of Rome, and if you are enjoying the video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more in Pearl of Rome content, then don't forget to fabricate a claim on the subscribe button. Did you agree with the list? Which achievements did you have a hard time getting? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully catch you all in the next one.